different program modes, full-time, PGP and applied AI, weekend executive PGP and applied AI, and weekend online PGP and applied AI. World-class cloud learning management platform and mobile app. Our students work with top firms and startups. Explore today how Aegis can help you launch your career in AI. Welcome to Aegis School of Data Science, the best school for postgraduate program in data science, business analytics, and big data in association with IBM, Industry Association with IBM, AWS Educate, NVIDIA DLI, UB Tech. IBM has set up Business Analytics Lab. Final certification is issued by IBM. Aegis facilitates scholarships, financial aid, and study loans available. We will work on live projects from the industry. Curriculum designed with the help of top data scientists and companies. Hands-on exposure to machine learning, stats, deep learning, NLP, Google TensorFlow, Spark, IBM Watson, AWS ML, and many, many more. Highly satisfied students with amazing reviews. Program delivered by IBM experts and the best data scientists. Program follows globally acceptable North American credit structure. Proud alumni working as data scientists with leading organizations. Participants can get opportunities for internships and final job placement with leading organizations. Aegis organizes Aegis Grand Bell Awards, Aegis Largest Data Science Congress Deep Learning Summit, Meetups, and Leadership Speaker Series. Network with the best data scientists and AI experts from around the world. Present your projects to the world. World-class delivery infrastructure and cloud learning management system. Three delivery models, full-time, executive weekend classroom, and online live interactive. Add wings to your career and explore today at www.aegis.edu.in. Ritin, sir, you're muted, sir. You're muted, sir. Okay. A very good evening to all of you, to all the participants who have joined in. So we have just played some videos uh, around so that you guys can get an idea that what data science is all about, even if the individuals are looking for to make their career in or do a transition into that data science or AI in these uh, exponential technologies, which is uh, uh, the new wave, we can say, which is, uh, you know, industry 4.0 revolution we all must have heard of. So in that... Uh, with, with, with that flow, we are coming up with that even today, in this evening, and I again very much welcoming you all of uh, you for this evening, uh, for attending this event. Let me quickly share that uh, quick agenda uh, with you. I believe uh, the screen is visible. Praveen, could you guide me? Can you see the screen? Hello? Yes, sir, I can see the screen, sir. Okay, brilliant. So now this event is all about, it's a quick meetup for one, one and a half hour in which we will be talking about uh, data science. Is it for me? Very simple topic. And uh, because there are individuals who, who are looking forward to, as I already mentioned, want to do a transition into data, data science, but they have no idea how to do with it, how to deal with it. There are individuals who are from non-technical background. They have a question uh, whether data science is the right career for them because there are a lot of jargons around and we get confused at that time. So that's why we have roped in today our uh, one of the esteemed speaker, Dr. Vinay Kulkarni, and uh, we are trying to uh, get our doubts cleared from him. So he's the director and mentor at Aegis School of Data Science and Cybersecurity, and also he's the adjunct professor at IIT Bombay as well. So a quick agenda for today's talk. Uh, so uh, I'll talk about, so a quick brief about his profile. So Dr. Kulkarni, as I mentioned, he's a director, faculty, and mentor for Aegis School of Data Science uh, and adjunct professor at IIT Bombay. So uh, he comes from uh, BTEC and uh, PhD from IIT Bombay itself, more than two decades of vast experience he has got in providing the tech solution, designing and implementing the algorithms. Ritin uh, sir, you are on mute sir. Hello. Okay. Sorry. I believe I have myself. Thank you for updating me. 
so this is a quick agenda for uh, i believe you might have not heard me listening uh, in about the quick brief about the you know this event we are coming up so it's all about data science is it for me so in which uh, uh, there are a lot of individuals who are looking for to make a transition in their career who are coming from non technical background there are individuals who have 15 plus years of experience there are individuals who are just college graduates having one or two years of experience perhaps you freshers who are looking forward to make a career transition or start their career in data science but there are a lot of uh, whims and fancies around uh, because data science a lot of jargons around as well we all might have heard and we have been listening so whether data science is a right fit for me or not so to clear all these doubts today we have roped in uh, dr vinay kulkarni uh, so uh, so a quick brief about his profile he is a director and mentor at ajax school of data science and cyber security and also an adjunct professor at iit bombay he comes from uh, btech and mtech uh, btech and phd from iit bombay itself more than two decades of vast experience he has got in terms of providing the tech solutions designing and implementing the algorithm for the complete automation processes over the past more than a decade he has been guiding mentoring and consulting the data science enthusiasts like you practitioners working professionals enterprises institutions on data science ml hadoop spark statistics and so on and at ages he also takes care of uh, the project mentorship he mentor the candidates for various projects also he takes the sessions on statistics hadoop and spark as well so over the past years work as a vice president for innovation and incubation geometric limited a strategic advisor for mind map it solutions a quick agenda we'll see a quick agenda for today's talk that what is going to be in that session what points we are trying to tap and that would be a completely live interactive session so try to be interactive as much as you can and uh, if you would have any questions maybe sir will guide you in between and also you can put your questions over the chat box and we will have a specific q&a session at the end quick agenda so we'll talk all about the differences different dimensions of data science and ai and ml where the future is heading what kind of jobs the skills and technologies individuals with no technical background or no coding background like civil mechanical <coughs> excuse me commerce economics background can shift into analytics or data science or not can any experienced candidate make a career transition into data science we have been encountered the individuals who have been in their 40s early 40s 40 plus age bracket but they are also looking to do a transition but they are still think and quite dicey at times whether this data science would be a right suited career for them or not if yes what they need to do and what skills and competencies one need to acquire so that the mate will grab you in one shot and at the end we have a take away session from sir itself uh, that how you can start your career a take away he would be uh, giving it to you and then a q and a session will start up so without any further ado i would uh, request sir to please come up and uh, turn on his uh, cam over to you sir and thank you so much for joining us thank you ritin thank you so much uh, can you confirm that you are able to hear me yes yes very much sir okay i think you will have to give me more rights than you have given me right now otherwise i'll not be able to share my screen okay yes so uh, praveen okay. i would request you to please uh, give rights to sir yeah okay so till they give me the proper rights uh, good evening everyone i see quite yeah. a lot of people the host now sir yeah yes. thank you thank you so much thank you so much yeah so once again uh, welcome everyone uh, hopefully it's going to be an interesting uh, let us say 50 minutes to 1 hour uh, of initial talk followed by question and answers uh, i think you should not hold back on your questions in any case whenever you have a question uh, please put it on the chat window and uh, you know ritin has the big task of collecting the questions and then uh, i'll also keep an eye on the on the chat window so i'll also take up the questions in between right so let me begin by sharing my screen and uh, setting making a few settings here okay okay so ritin can you once again please confirm that you are able to see my shared screen uh, yes sir we can see the screen sir okay fine great okay so like uh, ritin explained the session is uh, about uh, data science is it for me uh, it's it's not going to just focus on uh, on whether it is 
for you or for anyone else. Uh, but I will begin with uh, giving a brief introduction to what is what is AI, what is ML, what are these uh, uh, you know fields capable of, and uh, and then we will move slowly on to uh, you know the more uh, relevant part uh, that the answers to which you would be interested in, right? So let us uh, move forward. I thought it would be nice to introduce this session uh, with some capabilities of uh, of the more jazzy part of AI or ML or uh, you know more broadly as you would call it the data science. Uh, and what you're seeing on the screen is actually some pictures of some people. Okay, except that uh, you know these are not real people, but uh, images generated automatically by some AI system, uh, you know, which has been given a description of the of the people. Okay, so as you can see, moving left to right from 2014 to 2020, the quality of the image, the, <laughs> fidelity, uh, the level of detail, uh, you know, has improved. Uh, in fact, this is one of the reasons uh, why uh, you know, these days, whenever you see anything on social media, you actually need to take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, because as I will show you later on in one of the videos also, anything is possible using uh, AI and uh, ML. Okay. So let me move on. I have, uh, <clears throat> you know, one or two videos that I would like to show you right now, very briefly for a minute or uh, two. Uh, right. So let me go to the videos straight away. Okay, So this first video is an interview, right? Praveen, you are able to hear the audio in the video. Can you please confirm that? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Above the Line, an intimate conversation with some of Hollywood's most recognizable faces. I'm Mark Ellis, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Tom Cruise. <laughs> Honor and privilege to be here. Uh, next name is, <laughs> good to see you, uh, as always, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, Ewan McGregor, to my left. Uh, to his left is Robert Downey Jr. Hi, I'm Robert Downey Jr. And to his left is George Lucas. Well, I apologize. Uh, Earlier, I had a burrito, and I've, I think I've got the uh, Kessel runs. So, I knew something. I thought it was a gas leak. I smells just want to wet. It smells I wet. I want to apologize. It's I know very wet. you guys were all thinking it. George. Gentlemen, the world's gone streaming. Streaming services are all the rage these days. Robert, when did you first realize that streaming was dominating your industry? You know, first I thought it was another word for golden showers. You know, oh, yes. the, the streaming thing. Sure, you know? sure, sure. It turned out to be. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it turned yeah. out to be what it is. Yeah, I will. I will inter interrupt the video here. The, the video itself is uh, quite long, but the the point that I want to emphasize here is that uh, all the people that you are seeing on the screen, uh, including you know their speech, is is fake. It has been artificially generated, and uh, if you have been watching movies of these actors. Uh, you can see that the fake generated video has mannerisms, facial expressions, uh, body movements, which exactly mimic, you know, those of the real uh, actors. Okay. Uh, so there are a number of videos like this, including videos of uh, President Obama and uh, uh, more recently President uh, Trump uh, and, and so many other personalities, right? So uh, like I was trying to tell you, this is the jazzy part of, uh, of our AI I will uh, show you one more video and then we will continue with our discussion, right? So <clears throat> now this, this video is about a different aspect of AI, you know, which includes a lot of uh, technologies coming together and uh, which is uh, quite difficult to bring together and execute. So take a look at the video and then we will uh, you know, move on.
So this, these robots are from a company called as Boston Dynamics, uh, which which is into making of these uh, state-of-the-art robots in quite some time. And uh, for those who have, of you who have walked on ice, would know how difficult it is really to balance oneself on ice. And the way in which this robot is doing it is really amazing. I just uh, over it a little bit, show you other aspects. Okay, I will pause the video over here. <clears throat> the whole point of showing these videos to you is uh, just to indicate the extent to which multiple, you know, progress in multiple technologies, including control systems, machine vision, uh, learning from uh, experience, learning by watching, you know, all, all of these which are different uh, parts of uh, the field of AI, how they have been brought together uh, into creating systems like this. And, uh, you know, again, these are the more jazzy part. For the most part, all of us uh, will probably not be involved in generating systems uh, like this. Uh, but this is uh, uh, to give you an idea of what is possible. Uh, you know, we will, of course, be involved in creating more uh, useful systems uh, closer to us and uh, which will do some useful work. And uh, to that extent, uh, you know, we are already experienced with various personal digital assistants, uh, you know, whether it is uh, Siri or on Android or, you know, various other platforms. Uh, we have experienced all of these uh, personal, uh, uh, you know, assistants in one way or the other, and they all involve the use of artificial intelligence. So the question is, what is AI? What is machine learning? And what is analytics, right? Uh, because these are terms that are used quite frequently and uh, it is uh, necessary to have a bird's eye view of uh, what, what these terms are all about. So let us take a look, right? By the way, uh, you know, some of these slides are sourced from a very excellent source and I would urge you to go and search, uh, download these reports. Uh, they are freely available and go through them. Uh, you know, if you visit the NASCOM site, um, you have a couple of AI primers as well as uh, use cases, uh, some of which are, of course, uh, shown here as part of my presentation. Uh, but these reports are really more exhaustive. So the question of whether is AI for me uh, probably will be answered uh, more to more than to your satisfaction uh, if you go through these reports. Okay. Uh, but anyways, what is AI? Uh, like it is written here, it is the ability of machines to perform functions similar to that of a human mind, like perceiving, learning, problem solving, etc. And glimpses of which you just just saw uh, when the robot, uh, in fact, I would urge you to go to the uh, source of those videos, which is uh, YouTube and look for uh, robots uh, prepared by Boston. Uh, pretty exhaustive videos and you can see all the capabilities of the robots, which involve everything that is mentioned over here, right? So there is advanced analytics, there is natural language processing, there is computer vision, uh, process automation, speak recognition, and so on. And then, uh, you know, down below here in this slide, you see specific applications uh, listed under those. Like for instance, uh, if you take uh, this box of computer vision, uh, it talks about face detection, object recognition, uh, you know, which is what is probably used by the robot when it tries to pick up the box. Right, And when the box moves away, it tracks the box. And again, uh, it tries to pick it up, right? Uh, then uh, motion detection, uh, you know, if something comes in the way of the robot, then it has to halt. It, it cannot harm, uh, you know, people who come in its way and so on. So if you go through the bottom portion of this particular slide, uh, it talks about all the applications in these various areas, right? 
So AI in a nutshell is a combination of all of these capabilities. The analytics is involved, NLP is involved, vision is involved, uh, process automation is involved, speech recognition is involved, and you know so many other things may also be uh, involved. Okay, so broadly that is artificial intelligence. Okay, and uh, for the most part we won't be dealing with all of these technologies, right? But let us take a look at what uh, AI can do. Uh, in fact, I have a couple of more slides coming up, so I'll probably skip this particular slide and give you a more simpler view, uh, just to explain what is artificial intelligence, what is machine learning, and what is deep learning, right? So as you can see here, AI is the overarching terminology. It's like an umbrella, right, which covers everything. And uh, the, the most prominent face of artificial intelligence today is machine learning, right? Uh, we have all heard about machine learning and the various kinds of machine learning. And uh, even within machine learning, uh, the techniques or the technology that uh, most uh, complex or capable systems today are using uh, broadly can be classified under uh, deep learning. Okay, and there are various other learning uh, methods also coming up. Uh, but you know, this, this simplifies this to a, to a very large extent, right? So AI is the biggest umbrella. Uh, inside that umbrella is the umbrella of machine learning. So machine learning, you can say, is a part of uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning is a kind of uh, machine learning, right? <clears throat> now, what is data science? Okay, now data science is actually the more uh, uh, operational part of all of these technologies. So this is involved, whether you are talking about AI or uh, machine learning or analytics, right? Uh, it all begins with uh, problem definition. Uh, then either you acquire data or you already have uh, data available with you. Uh, you need proper kind of data. So data cleaning actually becomes a very important part of uh, data science. Uh, after that, you process the data to understand it, uh, right? At, at uh, let us say the human level, uh, which includes analysis and visualization and some kind of statistical uh, uh, processing of the data to uh, come out with a set of numbers which broadly tell you how good the data is, how much spread it is, and so on and so forth, what distribution it follows. Uh, so that is visualization, analysis, statistical analysis, and so on. And then you see the, mod the box called as modeling. Now that truly is only the machine learning part of it, okay? That is the only box uh, in which you would really uh, you know, fight with the algorithms, trying to find out which algorithm fits the best, uh, you know, in order to identify the patterns within the data and so on. And then once you have a good machine learning model in place, then you focus on automating the process. What is automating the process? Okay, now that I have understood some patterns data, I would like to, uh, you know, use it again and again. Like, uh, for instance, when I'm browsing, uh, I generate a lot of data, which is uh, captured by these uh, e-commerce websites, and they build a machine model, and they are able to predict what I'm going to do next or what I might buy, right? Uh, so they have a model in place. And then uh, once they have a model in place, then they automate the entire thing so that the cycle goes on, right? So they track what I do, uh, they respond to my actions, uh, they make suggestions, they make recommendations, so it goes round and round in, in cycle, right? So data science involves all of these steps. And uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, uh, it, is, it is a very important process, which is part of uh, AI, ML, and analytics, right? Now, analytics itself as a term has been in existence, uh, you know, much, much before, let us say, AI or ML came into play. It's a very generic uh, definition, right? So it is a systematic computational analysis of data or statistics. Uh, the, the idea is to generate information uh, through the systematic analysis of data and discover and communicate meaningful patterns in the data and uh, you know, for the purpose of drawing conclusions about that information. So broadly, this is analytics. Uh, you know, the more visible face of analytics is uh, <clears throat> is graphs, charts, and uh, uh, you know tables, and various kind of method of summarizing the whole thing, right? So we start off with AI, which is uh, you know putting all of these uh, various capabilities together uh, at the 
core of that probably are some machine learning algorithms which are based on let us say statistical fundamentals which come from uh, basically from analytics right so these are the three terms and this uh, figure tries to neatly summarize all of this into one diagram over here right so what is data science it requires you to understand uh, mathematics and statistics uh, of course some aspects of computer science and most importantly most importantly i mean i can't say this uh, i can't emphasize this much enough but most importantly business domain knowledge right uh, you may be good at mathematics you may be good at computer science but unless you understand the domain or the field or the problem that you are trying to solve right uh, you know your knowledge of mathematics and computer science uh, will not be put to good use so you need definitely domain uh, knowledge in order to you know build uh, good systems okay so now the question is why ai and ml and analytics why now you know culprit is this i will mean, i would i mean maybe uh, using the word culprit is is something uh, not very correct but uh, the enabler is this right so what is this this is the amount of data that is getting generated and passing through the internet pipes and as you can see uh, post 2000 Uh, there has been a sudden increase in the data that is getting generated and it is flowing through the uh, internet and this is one of the primary reasons why in the last about 10 15 years the field of uh, ai ml analytics suddenly taken off right most of the techniques like for instance neural networks or uh, regression analysis they have been around for you know uh, decades uh, probably even a century old right but why is it that only now in the last 10 15 years suddenly everybody has started talking about uh, about all of this it is basically because availability of of data right so this is kind of uh, summarizing what is happening here and so we create more data each day it is not a waste product but it is a treasure waiting to be discovered by curious motivated researchers and practitioners Uh, in order to see the trends that is that are hidden in the data and uh, to to meet various current challenges right because when you throw computers at data or data at computers uh, given the vast computing capabilities of computers you know it can dig into this data and uh, take out patterns which we are incapable of doing especially when it comes to really huge amounts of data right so that's why in the last 20 years suddenly we see a lot of interest getting generated in this so uh, in order to just summarize you know long 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 back uh, the data could probably compared with what was there in a coconut right very predictable uh, you know the quantity was known you know when you break a coconut you know what is going to come out uh, whereas the data flow right now it's like a, a dam that is overflowing okay uh, you don't know what is going to come out uh, um, you know and you have to take it as it comes right the method of storage earlier you could store all the data in floppy disks and uh, hard disks and so on but now you have uh, huge data centers in which the data can be uh, you know needs to be stored uh, because we are talking about hundreds and thousands of terabytes petabytes yottabytes zettabytes what not uh, that kind of data and then uh, most importantly the kind of data that is getting generated see earlier uh, there was a lot of what we call as structured data uh, broadly data which could be captured in nice looking tables uh, but these days uh, you know uh, that is there of course but most importantly most of the data almost 99 odd and more percentage of data is unstructured uh, what we mean by unstructured is text audio video you know uh, tweets and blogs and comments uh, which which get generated and shared and published okay so that is the bulk of data and which contains lot of intelligence and uh, information you know like uh, was, was said in the video by vishal from uh, nvidia right so that is the reason why uh, we in the last 15 20 years have started talking about Uh, artificial intelligence so enterprises are looking to monetize uh, data and uh, that will drive adoption of ai right uh, so these are some uh, numbers which have come from survey and these are india based uh, this is from an india based survey right 
So 93% of the companies surveyed saw potential in the value of data and close to 50% are already involved in monetizing it, right? So uh, people are already doing it and uh, this is reflected in, uh, if you go through the NASCOM report, uh, some of which I'll be showing you later on, you will understand the extent to which companies have started uh, applying all of these principles into building some useful systems. Okay. Uh, now let us also understand some global trends. Okay. Because the question of is it for me uh, also has to be looked at from uh, from uh, from the trends that are existing uh, globally. And some of these charts I have taken from the Artificial Intelligence Index report. Again, this is a freely av available report which you can probably download. Uh, it's from Stanford University, as you can see. Uh, very exhaustive report, so I would urge you to download it, right? Uh, this is about how much of investment is going into uh, in AI and related fields over the years. So even as you can see, within a span of about five years, uh, you know, the investment has increased about uh, five times or six times, close to five times, right? And uh, you know, a lot of it is, it's also giving you the division between private, public, and uh, you know, uh, investments and so on. But nevertheless, the trend is extremely clear, right? Uh, <clears throat> which regions of the world are adopting uh, AI, right? Uh, so as you can see, practically all regions of the world, and you know, it's a surprising fact that India's name comes uh, second over there, which means companies in India too are actively adopting or seeking to adopt AI and AI-based technologies, okay? So again, in this context, ask the question, is it for me, right? If it is not for you, then for whom? Because the need is there, the demand is there, the applications are there, right? And as we know, there is shortage of uh, skilled manpower uh, in particular space, and this chart kind of says it all. So the demand is not just in India, but globally, okay? Now, these are other indicators that show you how AI is not restricted to the technology domain or uh, high-tech or IT uh, industry. Uh, but even banks are talking about uh, AI and automation and, uh, you know, this, so this is a count of the number of times AI is mentioned in some of the banks' reports and you can find our Reserve Bank of India right up there. Uh, so, you know, all the major banks of the world also have taken cognizance of the fact that uh, this is an emerging field with uh, immense potential and applications, right? Uh, <clears throat> not only banks, but if you look at corporate uh, earnings and, uh, you know, the, the calls that are, uh, that precede and follow the corporate earnings, even there the word artificial intelligence, uh, you know, is, uh, is prominently mentioned. Uh, you know, in the calls of many of these companies as shown by these trends. Again, these are various research trends that have been uh, published by, uh, you know, the Stanford Center of uh, Artificial Intelligence. So these are taken from there, right? Throughout the world, uh, countries, a lot of countries have published AI strategies, including India. So the, the color in which you see India, uh, you find that almost 80% uh, of the globe is in the same color, which means most countries of the world have uh, stated AI policy. And our uh, policy itself was, I think, published somewhere in 2018 or 19. Again, it's a freely available document and uh, go through it. Uh, it talks about uh, the way forward for India as far as this technology is concerned. Right. Uh, so the takeaway from this slide is the world is interested, not only India, but the world is interested in this uh, particular technology. Right. Skill penetration. Uh, again, this is a slide that will surprise you. Uh, so, you know, on the one hand, we talk about shortage of skills and then we see that India is right on top here in terms of availability of skills. Uh, definitely, yes, it is available in pockets and, uh, you know, in terms uh, being, uh, uh, you know, providing services to many of the international companies, it is not surprising that uh, there is a pool of talent available in India, probably in uh, concentrated in cities like uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Gurgaon, and so on and so forth. Okay. Again, the reason why I'm showing you these slides is to give you a global perspective of the kind of investment, the kind of interest, the kind of applications, uh, the kind of talent pool that is getting generated, 
which is related to ai ml and related uh, fields okay so rather than just talk about technology i think a uh, lot of questions will be answered uh, if you understand these uh, trends because this is not a trend for today or tomorrow but uh, it is a trend for the next 5 years 10 years and so on right okay so now let us come to this question of uh, is it for me now before i proceed uh, praveen uh, ritin sorry are there any questions that we need to take up at this point in time let me quickly look up the chat window Ritin, Praveen? Uh, yes, sir. Are there any questions? Uh, sir, actually in chat there is one question. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, I can see it. Is data science a good one for MBA students, uh, sir? The answer is yes, we'll come to that. How many credits our... Okay, now that's a very specific question. I'll let uh, maybe Ritin answer that. So not many questions so far. Uh, we'll go ahead. Okay, so the... Question about whether uh, data science is good one for MBA students. Uh, right now, the answer is yes, and uh, you will definitely see why very soon. Okay, so let me get back to my presentation. Okay, so the question is, is it for me? Right, everyone will have this in mind because uh, you know it's, it is something unknown. Okay, so let us uh, spend some time on this particular question. Right, now let us understand. Uh, where is data useful? Where is data science useful? Where is knowledge of machine learning and artificial intelligence useful? Okay. Finally, if you think about it, you know, uh, most of us probably will be in some kind of job or looking for a job, or some of us will be looking for uh, making some startups, right? And uh, if you look at the various functions in such an organization, uh, you will have these functions in place, you know, whether it is marketing, sales, customer service, IT, operations, HR. Uh, then, of course, you have areas like fintech and health tech, right? So, as you can see on this particular slide, uh, <clears throat> opportunities exist in all of these areas, right? So, the question that you need to ask yourself is, uh, well, keep aside AI, ML, and all that. If, if this was not there, which of these roles would I be comfortable performing, right? Are you interested in marketing? Are you interested in sales? Are you interested in uh, customer service, right? Ask yourself this question. Now, obviously you're going to fit in one of these slots, right? So now comes the question of what is the role that AI or ML uh, can play in, in this particular uh, field, right? What are the applications of AI and ML in customer service? What are the applications of AI and ML in sales? Right? So the answer right away is that if you are in general interested in sales, yes, there are AI and ML applications uh, which are very relevant in the sales field. Okay. So the question is not about whether, uh, you know, is it for me? Like I was trying to tell you, one of the most important ingredient of developing good systems is domain knowledge. Right. So what are you basically interested in? Are you interested in marketing? Are you interested in manufacturing? Are you interested in operations? Are you interested in research? Are you interested in HR? Answer this question first. Right. And then automatically, whether you like it or not, AI has an application there, like, like we, we will be seeing very soon or we have seen earlier also in one of the slides. Okay. So <clears throat> data is making a difference in all of these areas and applications are getting in all of these areas, right? Is it for me, which are the industries which are using uh, AI? High-tech telecom, automotive and assembly, financial services, business, legal and professional services, healthcare, pharma, consumer goods and retails. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? And probably you will be able to fit everything and everything, anything within the framework of uh, these industries over here, right? Medical, huge application. Finance, huge application. Manufacturing, huge applications. General R&D, huge applications, right? So again, the question you need to ask yourself is, in which industry are you, are you interested? So it's not just about AI or ML, right? If you are interested in uh, automotive uh, you know, field, then be sure that AI and ML have applications in that particular field, right? So it is just another uh, skill set that is relevant, okay? Now we jump into it a little bit deeper. 
right? Even in, in an organization, even in an industry, uh, there are so many aspects to it, right? So we talked about human resources, manufacturing, marketing, and sales. You know, so the numbers that you see here are based on uh, surveys that was carried out, okay? And uh, you can see uh, many boxes, and, and this is about a year back. Uh, sorry, this is actually a very latest uh, report. This is 2021, right? Okay, one second, yeah. So, as you can see, not only the industries, but specific uh, verticals in the industry also are, uh, are the playing ground for uh, applications of AI, ML, and analytics. Okay, so is it for me? Yes, if you're interested in uh, any of these fields, which probably you will fit into one of these areas, right? Uh, think of your, yourself as doing a normal job, right? You will get definitely fit yourself in one of these areas. And now, is there scope for AI and ML application there? Yes, there is definitely. Okay, so that is the point that I'm trying to make. Okay. Now, just to uh, <clears throat> help you to understand the various applications, I'm drawing your attention to this report, again, from uh, NASCOM. Uh, this is a report that is two years old, and uh, just the other day I saw a call by NASCOM for, uh, you know, the AI applications and game changer uh, application, uh, you know, uh, for this year, right? So probably by the end of the year, they'll come out with a modified report, which will contain much more uh, information about the areas in which AI is applicable, right? So you can probably download this uh, report. The title of the report itself is Top 50 AI Game Changers. Okay. And uh, uh, now in here, in this particular report, you have uh, 50 companies doing AI related work in different aspects of business. And uh, it, it explains very nicely what are the specific use cases, right? So again, it contains both horizontal as well as uh, verticals mentioned. Uh, you know, broadly, applications of AI in advanced analytics, in conversational bots, quality and security, and the various uh, you know aspects of uh, industry like uh, retail, social impact, travel and logistics, manufacturing, insurance, healthcare, and so on. Okay. So I would urge you to download this report because it gives you a very good idea of the kind of applications uh, you know companies are are developing in the area of AI and ML, right? And you can definitely find that uh, your area of interest would be covered by one or more of these applications. Okay. So this is the format of uh, the report that NASCOM has generated. Like for instance, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> natural language processing for intelligent sales and marketing. So what the company has done, okay. So if you are interested in marketing, uh, then what is the intersection of AI and marketing? Okay, this is one of the application areas, right? Uh, unstructured multiple uh, data analysis, you know, a general purpose uh, solution for uh, going through data and uh, creating actionable insights uh, from the data, uh, and particularly for analysis of customer uh, feedback. So this is more related to customer relationship management or CRM systems, okay? Automated customer interaction. Now this we are already seen happening, right? Uh, you know, just the other day I got a phone call from one of the insurance companies and uh, it was a voice activated call. It was as if I am talking to a human, except that it was uh, machine originated and it was not a one-sided call. You know, it used to wait for my uh, responses and uh, then appropriately respond to my answers. So it was like talking to a real uh, person. Okay, so that, that is the level of sophistication we have uh, reached already, okay. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that uh, AI is like a basket of uh, fruits, right? There are many applications, there are many domains. And uh, the question of, is it for me? Well, you know, given a basket of fruits like this, you will definitely find some area, some application that is of interest to you. So the most important thing to identify is what are your core interest areas, right? Rather than looking at, uh, you know, whether AI or ML is suitable for me, I would put the question the other way around, 
okay which is the core area of interest that you have are you interested in engineering are you interested in marketing are you interested in sales right now once you are clear about this you can be dead sure that uh, there are ai and ml applications in in those particular areas and in the future if you want to uh, you know make a mark in your area of work you better have knowledge about uh, you know analytics how to process data uh, you know have knowledge of uh, machine learning what does it mean and what are the prospects and possibilities of of ai right i hope the way to think uh, you know this way to think will will help you because really the you know it is like ai ml and uh, data oriented tools are one of the uh, tools in your toolkit right what is more important is your core area of interest okay so that is what you should be looking for okay now there are various other questions that seemingly come up uh, you know what can i do at my age what can i do with my skill set what can i do with my experience and what can i do with my domain knowledge right now as we can uh, see and uh, ritin has already mentioned uh, you know the question of age we will take up slightly later also skill set uh, experience domain knowledge so these are some of the points that typically come into people's head okay i have already spent 20 25 years working in the industry so does ai uh, suit me or am i suitable for ai ml uh, is it really for me okay so let us uh, take a look at some of these questions now if you look at the job that are uh, advertised uh, you know skills um, you see uh, a range of skills getting advertised uh, like this okay so uh, from the left uh, this is taken from one of the recent articles that i read uh, from a magazine called as towards data science the link is given down there uh, you know general ability to analyze Uh, is is extremely important statistics is important knowledge of machine learning is important and uh, as i have shown you in the graph earlier those three circles or four circles that i showed you you know computer science is important so computer science mathematics machine learning uh, they are of course important uh, communication right visualization now these are again capabilities that one definitely should have or should develop over a period of time right now specific technologies like for instance ai deep learning ll nlp you know uh, neural networks come way later right so what the industry is looking for is basically your capability to understand the problem your capability to analyze the problem think of solutions all right and specific skill sets or knowledge of mathematical algorithms and so on they come much later right so definitely you should have them but uh, you know doesn't mean that if you know 10 algorithms you will get hired you will get hired more because you are capable of solving problems than because of your knowledge of let us say regression or we will need five days anymore five days can we mute the person please okay so spend half a minute on this particular slide again what i'm trying to emphasize here is that yes specific skills are definitely required but it is the more generic skills you know things like communication your command over statistics your ability to analyze uh, you know that comes up first right uh, so again i will link this up with my earlier statement be clear about the the broad area of your interest okay don't think about ai or ml ai ml application will definitely be there in that particular area right and much you trusted in a core area picking up these other skills is is uh, is not a very difficult uh, job right now other skills in demand uh, of course you need to understand a programming language okay now again here one of the question that comes up is i have never done programming in my life right okay now let me tell you uh, now this is where uh, you know as a person who is involved in imparting education uh, you know through ages i can tell you that we have had people from arts commerce uh, background non engineering background okay and uh, people with uh, uh, at various uh, level of skill or experience 
uh, ranging from people fresh out of college to people who have already retired. Okay, uh, who and and the only thing that uh, that was common to all of these people is the basic interest in the subject. Okay. Uh, they were interested in the subject and wanted to apply it. And once that basic interest and uh, enthusiasm is there, uh, you know, many of these skills can be very readily acquired and we have seen it happening. Okay. So we have seen people without programming knowledge, picking up programming and going on to uh, become uh, or implement good projects and get good jobs. Right. Other things like how, what is the methodology that you use for uh, developing systems? Uh, okay, then how to deploy the solutions. So, uh, you know, awareness of what is the full stack development. So we are not saying that you need to be 100% in all of this, depending on your role and responsibility. Uh, and I'll talk about it very shortly, depending on your role and responsibility, your uh, level of maturity in all these skills uh, will vary, of course, like, for instance, uh, you know, if you, if you are in the starting of your career and uh, you want to get into implementation of uh, machine learning algorithms or use of machine learning algorithms obviously you need to be high on programming skills um, whereas if you are the you know i did trying to identify applications or solutions that can be built using uh, ai and ml uh, <clears throat> then uh, some of your other skills you know like domain knowledge and your ability to get things done, uh, your project management knowledge will definitely be useful. Okay, so you need a variety of skills at different uh, levels, depending on uh, your roles uh, in the organization that you are, right? But I don't have the background. Well, uh, let us ask ourselves a question. Uh, did we have, so for instance, I am a mechanical engineer. Now, did I have the background of mechanical engineer before I started learning mechanical engineering, obviously not, right? So what did I do? I spent some time learning mechanical engineering, right? So again, what is important here? It is your interest. So if you have interest in a particular field, you can always acquire the background, okay? So this is something that I will say again and again, right? Uh, basic interest in a field is more important. Basic knowledge in a field is more important than acquisition of these skills which can happen in a time-bound manner. So I'm interested in things mechanical, so I spent four years learning mechanical engineering, right? If you are interested in accounts, you spend three, four years learning accounts. If you are interested in psychology, you, you spend three, four years learning psychology, right? Did we have the background before we jumped into it? No, not at all. What did we have? We had interest. So it comes back to that, right? So this is not an excuse at all. I don't have the background is not an excuse at all. Ask yourself the question, do I have the interest? Okay, that is more important. Where should I begin? Okay, now this is very, uh, particularly in these days and times when you have the internet, okay, uh, you find yourself in a situation like this. You find yourself in a maze, right? Uh, there are 10,010 places from where you can start and you can keep moving around in circles. You know, uh, it happened to me, it happened to many people who wanted to enter a particular field. And this is where, so what is the solution, right? Where should I begin? A good question, but what is the solution? Of course, you need a springboard, right? Again, we go back to the fact that if I want to become a mechanical engineer, I don't go around uh, running around here and there. I know exactly what to do. I mean, I enroll myself in a course related to mechanical engineering. But then why do we get this question? Where should I begin? It is basically because the field is so young and, uh, you know, uh, perhaps there are no textbooks, perhaps there are no formal courses, which by the way, now have started coming up, right? Many colleges, institutions have started offering courses. So, you know, the clarity to students is coming up, right? But please understand that since the field is new, rapidly changing, uh, new techniques, new methods, uh, new platforms, new tools, so many things are happening, right? And uh, that's where this question comes up. So, uh, you know, a couple of years down the line, nobody will ask these questions because there will be regular courses in uh, AI, ML, data science, and so on, right? So this is a temporary question that is coming up at this point in time. So where should I begin? Well, definitely you should choose yourself a platform, uh, platform from where 
uh, you can use it as a springboard, which will give you regulated information about uh, what AI is all about, what uh, ML is all about, and so on, right? So you need to identify. Uh, <clears throat> now, let me tell you, uh, there is there are tons and tons of uh, courses and blogs and uh, you know very good uh, sources available uh, through uh, you know publishing sites like uh, medium.com or towardsdatascience.com just to name a few right uh, but the whole problem is again you find yourself like you are in the maze right once you gain a little bit of understanding about the field then all of these resources are very useful so if you ask me it makes sense to spend a few months, okay, uh, going through a regulated course or a structured course, which will introduce you to various aspects of uh, data, how to process data, what, how to analyze it, uh, statistics, programming knowledge, uh, programming language, then uh, introduction to machine learning techniques, what is big data, how to process it, you know. So identify a course which will uh, launch you and which you can use as a springboard to launch yourself. Right? So that is where you should begin. When can I begin? Is age a barrier? Okay, I've already touched upon this point. Uh, <clears throat> definitely not. Right? So I will just show you uh, this particular graph, which I think uh, originates from Kegel. Uh, so as expected, you know, people with between 25 to 30 years of age are the most uh, active in this particular field, uh, and uh, justifiably so. But as you can see, uh, it doesn't mean that people uh, who have spent uh, significant uh, you know time uh, and the what what do you the number that you see at the bottom is the age right so the <clears throat> the only thing i would like to tell you here is that you should leverage your age and experience okay what i mean by that is assume uh, you know you are just out of your college great uh, you know, understand what ML is, what AI is, what are the different possibilities, what are the algorithms, uh, become good at programming, right? Uh, you may have to struggle a little, little bit if you already are not exposed to programming, but as I told you, that skill set is not very difficult to acquire. Uh, you know, there is, there is effort involved, okay? If you are 10, 12, 15 years experienced, uh, you know, you have certain uh, responsibilities that you are already uh, shouldering in your organization, let us say you are a project manager, okay? Now, as I have told you, uh, there are various opportunities. There are umpteen opportunities where you can uh, implement uh, this technology to make your operations more streamlined, more profitable, uh, more optimized, right? And uh, so if you are already an experienced, uh, let us say, project manager, Having knowledge of uh, machine learning and what it is capable of will definitely help you to identify problems that can be solved, to constitute teams that can help you solve the problem, to guide the solution, right? If you are providing service to another company, you can, as a project manager, uh, communicate with your potential or existing clients, understand their uh, needs, convert them into specific uh, projects and propose solution, right? Obviously, uh, you may not want to spend time actually developing the machine learning models, but then you should, you need the capability to know what ML can do. And uh, this is where you will bring the two things together, your existing project management knowledge and your newly acquired machine learning or uh, data handling knowledge uh, you will be able to combine, to come out with solutions, identify problems, first of all, come out with solutions, and actually get them implemented, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, no matter what your age is, never give away or uh, never discount your existing experience or knowledge. Use AI and ML to bolster it, you know, to make it more strong and see how you can add value to yourself and to the organization using the knowledge and experience that you already have. And again, let me tell you, in ages, uh, we have had people uh, you know, close to retirement age or who have already retired, uh, you know, going through uh, courses and also you know, uh, creating a startup that has also happened. Well, so really speaking, 
there is no age barrier. Uh, the only caution that I would like to give you here is uh, don't junk your existing knowledge and experience. Okay, just see how ML AI knowledge can make it much stronger, right? Future of AI and ML, I have just one slide. A lot of things are happening. And like I told you, uh, this is a field that is young and uh, it's just about 10, 15 years old. Uh, tools are getting developed uh, by the presence. Uh, you know, two years back, three years back, you had to understand uh, the in and out of the mathematics uh, to be able to create ML code. Uh, but nowadays, you know, uh, there are platforms which have come up, there are facilities available online, uh, uh, created by various companies that talk about auto, ML, uh, no code way of working, right? Uh, new algorithms are getting developed, new applications are getting developed, and of course, uh, the domains are ever increasing, right? So, as of now, the future is exciting. A uh, lot of things are happening. The pace of development is very high. And uh, one may feel stressed looking at the amount of information that is available on the internet. Uh, now that happens in any field that is uh, nascent or that is growing up, right? So the best thing to do is identify your area of interest, right? Uh, understand the applications in your area of interest. See how ML or AI can solve some critical problems there, how it can improve profitability, reduce time, improve efficiencies, right? Make supply chain uh, more reliable or uh, less expensive, okay? So there are umpteen number of applications where you can uh, use AI and ML. And uh, as, we, as we continue our journey along this path, okay, we are getting support uh, from various other companies where uh, they are offering us platforms where the need to code is is reducing okay and uh, specific for specific applications like uh, you know natural language processing or text understanding there may already be uh, you know ready made applications which you just have to include in your applications that you are developing right so a lot of exciting things and uh, for the foreseeable future next 5 10 whatever years uh, i think uh, you know this this path can keep us uh, very busy. Okay, so this is my last slide, and uh, I hope I have given you a gist of how to go about it. What is AI ML? And now, if you have any questions, uh, we can probably take it up. So we can take the questions, guys. If you would have any questions, so feel free to ask the questions. Anybody would have any question? You can type your questions to the chat box. So we have certain questions. Uh, comes up, I mean, they have come already, I believe. So, uh, Haseeb is asking, apart from the traditional courses and programs, uh, are platforms available where one can get familiar with data science? So, I believe we already have uh, touched that point, sir. Correct, yeah. So, Haseeb, uh, you know, things are getting easier and easier. Okay, now there is always a constant debate that is going on, how much of mathematics should I understand, how, how much should I know, right? I, I would just like to tell you that when I was in college, uh, you know, writing a, a, a Windows program, a program that could run on the Windows operating system, uh, basic program development took seven days because there was a complex, uh, you know, message passing loop that we had to implement, right? Now, these days, nobody spends that kind of time. Uh, the application framework is automatically generated and then you have to fill in your uh, code. Right? So similar things are happening even in this particular uh, field. So at this point in time, yes, you need to understand mathematics a little bit. And uh, uh, But as you go along, uh, uh, you know, uh, you will get many platforms where uh, the need for understanding the deepest of mathematics reduces. Okay. So another question, we can take it from uh, uh, Bubakir, I believe. I, I believe I'm pronouncing his name in the correct manner. So he's asking after completing the, after completion of this data science course, can the certificate be used for PhD admissions? So he might be an international individual. So regarding the credits transfer, yeah. he might be asked. So if you want to answer that, Ritin, you can go ahead. But before that, let me tell you, uh, Bubba, uh, that uh, you know, in my experience, uh, the students who have passed, and I can only talk about uh, ages with which I am uh, associated. 
right? Uh, people have, after finishing this course, applied for uh, higher studies and uh, they have got through, okay? So I will leave it at that. So, you know, is there a guarantee? Of course, nobody can guarantee anything, but uh, people have done it. So they have gone for uh, higher degrees, uh, including masters and uh, doctorate. Uh, I know this because they came and asked for recommendations. So it's all about the credit transfer I would like to add on. So here the program provides the credits and there are institutions who understand the credit transfer based system. So the program what we offer, it's a completely uh, 45 credit unit is the minimum credits what we have and it, there is no limit of the maximum credits. So any program as per the Northern American structure above then 36 credit unit is considered as a program to individual uh, can go forward for higher studies for those institutions who understand that credit is structured based pattern. So in this way, like uh, Sarah has mentioned, so individuals have done over the past and you can very much go ahead and do that. I believe that is uh, suffice. I believe yeah, that, that answered your question. Uh, Mubara, I believe you're still there. So, uh, he is appreciating. Uh, Dr. M. Murli Krishnan is also there. So, so i think there are not many other questions so if anybody has any questions yeah so we can uh, we can have the questions over chat and if anybody wish to uh, communicate they can turn on their microphone and ask direct question to the sir so yeah, any you can probably raise your hand and uh, your mic can be turned on not a problem Though we have touched upon most of the questions, what individuals they might be having. Over the last slides, you have you have the complete brief for Dr. Kulgani, but still, if individuals have any questions, please come up. Looks like no more questions, uh, Ritin. So hopefully people have got information that... Uh, okay. 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 So I thought somebody would be asking the question. So I would also like to thank uh, the uh, JNTU institution, AITM and GGI, that is a Gulzar Group of Institutes for supporting that event. So they partnered with us uh, for that event as well. And I really thank the support that you, your institution has uh, given us and also we'll be conducting with such sessions in the near future as well. So thank you so much, sir. I believe we are uh, almost, uh, it was a wonderful uh, session. And I believe the individuals, they might have uh, got the idea and uh, you have brilliantly explained very well that what are uh, the ways the individuals, they can do a transition. And uh, the major thing is the interest. If any, anybody can do anything, some questions had come up, I believe. Any placement support from your side? Okay, Harish is asking. Okay, Harish, I'll take that question. So very much. So at ages, we have a dedicated career management center who supports the uh, participants with the excellent placements. It is very much there. Okay, so the placements are there. So thank you so much. Anybody would have any questions? Last quick questions we can take, guys. It's like I can see there are 46 participants who are still with us. Anybody would have any questions? Quick questions we can take. All right, I believe we are done with the question, sir. Thank you so much for this wonderful session, sir. And uh, I would also like to thank the individuals, the audience for their patient listening. And if you have any questions, you can uh, reach out to our uh, various channels, like our uh, email and over uh, to uh, our social media platforms or Facebook or uh, any other portals or maybe websites or through emails. So thank you so much for this uh, wonderful session. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, wish you, wish everyone all the best and, uh, uh, you know, go for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.